launch weekend special code espresso gets you 30% off your entire order at gfuel.com. If you're interested, check it out. So Modern Warfare is rounding out its first weekend out in the wild. And one thing that I'm sure a lot of you guys probably have realized is that it can be pretty unforgiving. Depending on what map you're playing on, depending on what loadouts you're using, depending on who you're playing against, it can be something that's a rather tough game compared to recent years for you, the player, to do well. So today I wanted to cover a handful of tips to allow you to do better and to help you improve in Modern Warfare, to help increase your success rate perhaps, to help allow you to have a better time and better enjoyment out of it. And so today we have five categories up on deck, 15 tips to discuss that should hopefully help you improve at Modern Warfare. If you guys have anything you'd like to add to this list, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. But if you guys are new, do be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing regarding everything Modern Warfare. We still have so much stuff here that I'm so excited for you guys so if you're new do be sure to hit that subscribe button anyways let's jump into the tips what we'll be talking about are the categories today of information and awareness weapon selection weapon play loadout tips and also tips for your movement and positioning so let's start out with the more so top level of things here that information and awareness stuff that not necessarily even coming down to your gun skill that can be useful to help you get the advantage and gain the upper hand in an oncoming gunfight so first thing is that information is obviously key. That's something that I run by here on the channel. I love to talk about just simple information. And the first tip that I can say is to afford yourself as much information as possible. Firstly, those coming down to perhaps your streak selection. Though I absolutely loved running high streaks in the beta, in the full game I've been primarily so far running personal UAV and UAV a three or four streak, sometimes two or three, depending on if you run hardline with it. But that information is absolutely so key. Every so often, I'll toss on the advanced UAV if I'm really feeling it, but that only lasts about 20 seconds, so I'm not too keen on it. I can end up getting those three to four kill streaks relatively quickly, so therefore that personal UAV and UAV will last me double time and cost me much less. Plus, of course, knowing where those enemies are on your minimap, that's absolutely key. Then, coming down and talking minimap a little bit further is that you have to utilize that minimap to your advantage. While it's not the full-on traditional minimap that we've seen in the past with your team and enemy fire showing up on that minimap, it is something that if you end up utilizing the minimap to know where your teammates are and realize those open gaps are likely where enemies could be, you can start to position yourself and be ready for gunfights where, say, if you don't see anybody close to you on the minimap, you might be in enemy territory. So you might be a little bit more cautious. You might be able to go into a situation thinking, maybe my gun should be up here. Maybe I should be ready for a firefight. But also, one thing that is tough to utilize because you have to look two different places at once is also noticing where that enemy fire is on your compass atop your hood. The fact that these are deconstructed and placed into two different places, that enemy fire not being on the minimap and instead atop your HUD, plus where you have to pay attention to that gap in positioning, that's something that just makes it a little bit more challenging compared to recent years, but if you can master it, it will greatly help you. One thing also rounding into this then and coming to a more generalization is that of knowing some map awareness and the flow. This comes down to something you learn more so over time, but with the map flow, you can start to predict choke points and spawns, stuff like that will help greatly but again you need to know your maps before you do that and that's something that takes an adequate amount of time played on each one so this may not be something you master in the first weekend maybe not even the second weekend but maybe a couple of weeks down the line or something like that to which when you finally start to understand how players will approach situations you can then set yourself up to be ready for them to come through a specific alleyway you can be ready to know that they're going to go through one specific corridor instead of taking the open streets and so on and so forth that stuff will come from your own experience but again that'll take some time to be able to set up a gunfight to be in your favor additionally moving on to some of the final information based tips here for this one big one that i would definitely recommend is partying up this is always a helpful tool considering that if you party up you're likely to have an open line of communication with your party members call outs can be so crucial if you're say on a streak and you have a friend with you patrolling an area or maybe even in the same building they can call out where they see enemies coming from they may die and then you can get ready for that gunfight whenever that player is pushing you and so on and so forth just having that information more sets of eyes are definitely better than one set of eyes so of course utilize that to your advantage and the final thing talking information wise is simply if you have a headset 
use that to your advantage. If you don't, well then try and tweak your audio settings to be something that can help you out. Audio is absolutely key in a lot of Call of Duty games, but especially in this game because footsteps are so loud. Sure, your teammates can be loud as well, but enemy footsteps are even louder. So if you can hear those, you'll be able to get ready for a gunfight or at least know the general positioning of those enemies around you. So you can be more alert, more ready for an engagement that may be coming your way. Now, moving outside of just simple information, heads up, tips for your gameplay, let's talk about some in-game content and some weapon selection. But before we do, I think it's a good segue to let you know that this video was brought to you in part by Scuff Gaming, who recently just launched their new Vantage 2 controller. The team over there was kind enough to send one over my way to let you know what they've got cooking up. The differences between the Gen 1 and Gen 2 Vantage controllers come down to the improved high-performance grips with upgraded trigger functions and a PC customization app coming this fall, as well as improved button haptics, refined tactile textures on the faceplate, bumpers, and the buttons. And on top of all those technical refinements, you also get the beauty of those four triggers on the underbelly of the controller, as well as two additional side bumpers for even more remappable use. I've used Scuff products for years now, so much so to the point that a regular stock controller feels weird in my hands now, and I'm also happy to announced that I am now an official partner with Scuff Gaming. So if you want to learn more about Scuff's Vantage 2 controller or anything in their expansive catalog of products, click the link in the description below, as well as be sure to use code ESPRESSO at checkout for 5% off your entire order. Let's talk weapon selection. Personally, to me, rifle play is the biggest key out of all the weapons so far. SMGs are absolutely fantastic, sure in some cases. LMGs can be effective. Snipers, well at range, you know that those are the best option as well, but those are very niche things. Rifles in this game definitely seem to be the meta. Of course, you have some fantastic options on offer. BM4A1 is without a doubt the best weapon in the game right now, in my opinion. Overall, though, the rifle classifications have some fantastic weapons like the M4A1. The Kilo is pretty great. The M13 can be wild. The AK-47 is powerful. And the FR-556, that thing can one burst if you're accurate. For my pre-release footage, I really haven't played around with it since the game launched. The Scar also is absolutely insane. It's got a little bit of a recoil kick to it, but it's powerful beyond belief. That said, rifle play is absolutely key. So maybe consider running a rifle in some instances, at least for now. Weapon balance is likely going to happen here in the next couple of weeks, but for the time being, rifle play is absolutely key. You can win gunfights close quarters compared to SMGs in a tight situation. So if you can cover short, medium, and in some cases long range, why not? Another huge tip that plays into that weapon selection is knowing your weapon recoil. Whether it's an AR, SMG, LMG, whatever it may be, knowing that weapon recoil can help you in engagements where you have to shoot more than four, five, or six bullets. If you hold down that trigger, that recoil could get absolutely insane, but if you know how to accurately counter that recoil, it's something that you have way more control than maybe your enemy does. You can do this by two different ways, I think. Firstly, just simply playing with each weapon and naturally learning how to control that, that little spray pattern that you can counter with your right thumbstick or you can end up going into private match and that will be something that you can just shoot at a wall and actually learn them study those and maybe perhaps master it a little quicker than just simply getting hands-on with each weapon and trying to learn them over time next we'll talk about our smallest of tip categories that being weapon play because i have really just one thing that i want to point out that i see not a lot of people utilizing to their advantage that being close versus long range engagements close range you can kind of just let your weapon fly you can hold down that trigger you can get those kills relatively easy because that mass that you're shooting at that's way closer to you and so therefore your hitboxes your target is much larger it's harder to miss but if you're going longer range the one thing that i would definitely suggest is to burst or tap fire your weapon don't hold down that unless you're really confident in your ability to counter recoil or control that recoil because tap or burst firing doesn't kick your weapon up as much as it would to just simply hold down that trigger. This, if you end up tapping or bursting, is something that can really help you get kills at some extreme distances. I know that I don't know what footage I'll end up putting up on screen for you guys to check out in video once editing this, but the things that come to my mind immediately are, say, on top of Tavors District, the main skyscrapers, you can absolutely beam people from across the map if you tap or burst fire because of that accuracy, that lack of recoil. Make sure you use that to your advantage. Next, we'll talk about some loadout tips that you can use. Utilize what you can firstly. That's the first tip here with this. There are some things in your loadout that can really be helpful and very useful, which is absolutely huge to your gameplay and your ability to do well. Things that you might not think about, such as, say, some ammo modifications, things like your 458 SOCOM rounds for the M4, things like your 10mm rounds for the MP5 and such are huge helpers. 
those in particular offer more damage and range for those things but of course there's plenty more that you could end up utilizing things like your heavy duty barrels increasing your range anything that could help out specific circumstances of your weapon and how you want to play with it those are absolutely key so take a look to what you have on offer and try and build out something more custom tailored to you not necessarily just something generalizing regular gameplay additionally things like your stopping power rounds as a field order that's huge because it increases damage for that magazine that you load kind of compounding on that is to build out attachments on weapons that suit whatever you're trying to do while it may sound simple to say build the most powerful class setup maybe you're not needing to have a big tip if you want damage range again adjust those barrels of your weapons accordingly if you want to change the rounds of your weapon to add more damage again like those 458 socom rounds the 10 millimeter rounds for the mp5 adjust the magazines if you want mobility custom tailor your stocks and grips to how you want to play those things are absolutely key next tip power setups admittedly i don't think that i'm going to run anything outside of overkill this year in my perk one setup double time is cool sure quick fix also can be something that's nice scavenger i don't necessarily need because i've run ammo boxes primarily but none of those perks overrule the necessity of overkill a lot of the pistols from the alpha and beta were pea shooters from what we saw they've gotten a little bit better in the full launch i think as far as secondaries go but when you consider the fact that you can run an m4 and an mp5 or an m4 and a p90 or something like that or you can run a sniper class of maybe the hdr and the m4a1 there's just no reason why you wouldn't in my books you can end up having something that is way better than a pistol or a secondary slash sidearm and at something that really doesn't cost you anything in terms of what your gameplay will afford to me you're not really losing out on much in terms of perk one selection by taking overkill on your loadout you're not really missing out on anything else because to me there's not really a huge crutch perk one selection so to me that's an absolute no-brainer now talking a little bit further about some weapon perks another one one that's big is that ghost keeps you off the radar no matter what that's something if you want to play stealth play i would definitely recommend ghost again perk 2 ends up having a little bit more in terms of what may be beneficial to you of course hardline is great but ghost of course for that stealth play and staying under the radar compared to your enemies that's absolutely huge as well and something I'd recommend. Now, let's talk about our last category here with this one, movement and positioning. Some of these are pretty quick and short and simple, but stuff that I think needs to be said. Firstly, always be ready for a gunfight, if you can at least. One thing that I would definitely recommend is strafing. I know that's not everybody's favorite thing to see, but it's absolutely beneficial. Whenever you have your gun up and ready around a corner, you can just snap to enemies a lot quicker than if you say run around that corner and have to break sprint and then have to get your gun up. Overall, it adds close to half a second or so onto that entire time, which is an eternity in a gunfight. That is literally life or death in terms of gunplay. So make sure you're strafing if at all possible and having that gun up in most instances that you can. Another thing is to not overutilize that super sprint. Know when to utilize it, know when to use it. If you're running right out of spawn to go and try and capture the domination point or something like that, sure. But if you're rounding a corner, don't do it because again, like we talked about, having that gun up is absolutely crucial. And so therefore that super sprint is the longest time that will take for you to break that sprint and get your gun up compared to maybe just being ready for a gunfight or even just a standard run or even walk. Make sure that you don't overkill on that super sprint. And the final thing to talk about in terms of tips is coming down to actually some just aim and recoil control and how you stance yourself in game. If you end up crouching in game, it will greatly reduce the recoil that you have on each weapon when simply holding down that trigger. Like we talked about earlier, burst firing and tap firing is of course great in terms of getting that weapon back to recentering, but if you end up crouching, you won't deviate too much from it to begin with. It offers a little bit more stability in that power position, and so therefore what you can see on screen right now is some comparative standing versus crouching shots, and the crouching is a lot tighter of a spread. That's something that whenever you take that and of course are applying that to in-game situations where you're shooting at enemies, obviously being way more accurate is something you want more. So if you can at all, again, we talked about it in yesterday's gold camo guide. If you can end up crouching or getting in the habit of going into a crouch right before an engagement, not only does it one mess with your enemy's hitboxes, but it also is something that tightens that spread of your recoil. So definitely utilize that to your advantage. But overall, that's 15 tips here that I think can help you improve in Modern Warfare and help you do a little bit better than you may be. Again, I know some people are having a tough time with it. And like we talked about at the very beginning of this video, it can be unforgiving at times. So to make this as best an experience as possible, 
definitely give these a try. Again, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If there's anything you'd add to it, maybe take away, whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare. If you guys want to stay up to do with absolutely anything, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected with outside of YouTube. Probably live on both those. If you guys want to check up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.